everybody. We are on our way to the conservation district to pick up our plants. <coughs> so excited. I'm picking up my order um, of huckleberries and other things. With me today is my friend Delia. She's helping me film and I want to give a little shout out to her. She's starting a brand new business and it is editing things like scripts and captions and things for YouTube videos. So she's helped me with a couple of times with mine and she'll be editing the captions for this video. And so check out the captions so you can see her work. And then uh, you do proofreading for, yes. for bigger projects. Yes. Correct. Okay. I will be linking her information down in the description below. So if you need a proofreader or an editor for your videos or anything like that, look her up. She's just getting started. So in the order that I'm picking up is huckleberries, grapes, um, trees, all kinds of things that the conservation district uh, is selling this year. I bought several varieties of different things. Um, <clears throat> and I'm super excited! Ah! As we speak, I have a crew that is digging up the new planting bed where my huckleberries will go uh, because I don't have room in my existing beds and none of them are the ideal conditions for huckleberries. So as we go through this video, I will talk a little bit about what huckleberries need, the kind of environment they need and the growing conditions, as well as things you might come up against. Uh, this is my first time growing huckleberries and honestly, I didn't even know that you could grow huckleberries in a backyard garden. Last I heard, nobody would figured it out yet because they are just stubbornly wild plants and they want to be wild out in the forest, under the trees, and they've not ever performed well in a farm situation. But it sounds like farmers and scientists are figuring it out, and they're now available for us. Yay, backyard gardeners, I love it. So you can learn right along with me as we go through this process. These are one of my favorite trees. They're tall and slender and they have the coolest red foliage in the fall. And they, the fruits are like these spiky berries, like, like almost a, a mace, like a mace and chain, ball and chain thing. That's awesome. I love that they're already in pots. All right, golden currants. Okay, this is how the trees usually come. Bare root. Okay, so these need to be put in the ground right away so those roots don't dry out. That's golden currant, which is an edible berry. Delicious. Here are my grapes. I know where I'm putting these, stupid grapes. These are gonna go over on that side of the yard. All right, mock orange. I thought I'd get these just because these are really cool shrubs. They're great for bees and butterflies when they're blooming. These are bare root again. <clears throat> and last but not least, the huckleberries. Okay, now how the heck? <laughs> not quite sure what to make of this. They were grown in plugs, it looks like. Not gonna lie, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping for potted huckleberries like how their blueberries came last year. On that. There we go. It's a little plug with a little tiny huckleberry. It's so 
so cute. All right, that is small. So those are going straight into the ground or into pots. Those are the only two options for that. Which is why I planned today all around planting. Okay, let's get started. I want to talk a little bit about huckleberries and the variety that I was lucky enough to acquire. This is the true mountain huckleberry, Vaccinia membranaceum. It grows wild in the forests from Washington to Montana and from BC to Oregon and all the states in between. This is not Vaccinium ovatum, the evergreen huckleberry that commonly grows in gardens in western Washington, and it is definitely not Solanum melanocerasum, the annual so-called garden huckleberry that isn't even a huckleberry, but is in the nightshade family Solanaceae. This is the true mountain huckleberry that is stubbornly wild and has stumped farmers and scientists for decades as they have attempted and failed to domesticate it. When I was in college only a few years ago, I was informed by my professors that no one had yet figured out how to grow huckleberries domestically, let alone agriculturally. At that time, the only way you could get huckleberries was to get a bucket and take a hike at the right time of the summer and hope you got to them before the bears did. This is why I am so beside myself excited about this project. This is an experiment. I've never known anyone to do this before, although apparently there are now farms that grow huckleberry plants all over Washington State. Maybe I will take a tour of one someday, but time will tell on that. I hope you join me for this experiment and follow me through the years as I wait on the edge of my seat to taste the first huckleberry off of my plants, if they even survive that long. So now that we know what I have, I want to talk a little bit about Vaccinium membranaceum. Mountain huckleberries prefer to grow in elevations between 2,000 and 11,500 feet above sea level. The most productive sites are located between 4,000 and 6,000 feet above sea level. Spokane is at 1,843, so we are a little bit lower than huckleberries preferred elevation. Most huckleberries prefer filtered sun or light shade, but they do need sun in order to produce berries. They prefer a sandy loam soil and require moisture for the first few years until they are well established. But once they are established, then they are quite drought tolerant. I selected a location underneath the ponderosa pine in my backyard because I felt that this was the closest that I would come to its natural habitat. Huckleberries also prefer quite acidic soils with a pH of somewhere between 4.0 to about 5.5. I did a soil test for this project thinking that this site below my pine tree would be quite acidic. I have always struggled to keep the grass growing in this spot and I thought that the pH was really low. But after doing a pH test and finding the soil to be a perfect neutral at right around 7, I realized that wasn't the case. So I'm researching ways of lowering soil's pH. I was planning on amending with pine needles, but I found in my research that that actually does not make any meaningful difference. Pine needles themselves are very acidic, but by the time they finish breaking down, it's pretty much a net zero. It does not make any difference to the pH of the soil it decomposed in. I considered coffee grounds after hearing the many benefits of amending with coffee grounds, but after researching that, I learned that what you need is unbrewed coffee beans. Once the coffee has been brewed, all of the acidity is in your cup, not very much is left in the grounds. I might still do that, but I'm not going to expect it to lower the pH of the soil like I want. What I did decide to do was add composted wood chips. I read several sources that pointed out that huckleberries like to grow in decomposing logs and previously burnt forests. I happened to have a client who wanted fresh bark chips on his flower bed, but before we brought in the fresh stuff, he wanted the old stuff taken out. So I just asked him if I could have it and not charge him for the dump. I took his bark chips and put it over my soil and then mixed it in. I want to continue to encourage the decomposition of these chips. We will see if that helps the plants at all. So thanks for joining me on this new adventure. Make sure to subscribe so you can follow me and see if I succeed or fail. I don't know if this will work or not, but we'll find out. I want to thank my crew for helping me with all this work and for letting me film them. And uh, at the Spokane Conservation District, thank them for selling huckleberries this year. This is so exciting. I'm just beside myself. So on that note, 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the garden.